So there we have a dome. Well, a lot of you know I've got this 6340 Conoline pickup, and I'm going to have to be doing quite a bit of work to that. Now, among the things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have to build a tailgate for it because they are in very short supply. And I think the way I'm going to do that is use an English wheel to curve the metal and, and create the contour so the tailgate matches the sides. The original tailgate didn't look like the sides at all. Mine's going to. And since I don't have an English wheel, we're going to build one. Now, if you guys remember back to the Frankenslabber project, and I'll leave a card up in the corner there, to it in case you want to find out about it. I built that project on a big framework. Now what you didn't see is on top of that framework was another framework that I had to demolish. But that framework is going to provide the steel for our English wheel. Now the last thing I cut was a 45 degree angle on this thing. That will be the first thing I cut this time so I don't have to flop back and forth changing from 45 to 90 degree angles. For those of you that don't know, what an English wheel is, is basically a hammer and an anvil. Only the hammer is a big wheel, and the anvil is a little wheel. And you squeeze the two together and roll them. It's like a spot slip roll, if that makes any sense. Anyway, I think this caster should make a perfectly good hammer, and I think this caster should make a perfectly good anvil. I think 18 inches between the support structure for the hammer and the support structure for the anvil is going to be plenty. The material is 2 inches thick, so that's 22 inches we'll cut. Now I want a little more reach than 18 inches, so I think I'm going to go with about 24 inches deep. That way we can fit a panel 2 feet in. I'm going to want a way to clamp it to the bench. In fact, I may end up bolting it to the bench. So I'm going to want some mounting flanges on it, and I'll make those out of angle iron that I scrapped from that same piece. So the hammer will mount here, and then the anvil will be on a telescopic adjustable gadget. Now the way we're going to make that telescopic screw attachment gadget, we'll take a piece of 2 inch square tubing with an 8 inch wall, and inside it we'll put a piece of one and three quarter inch. Now if you look at this tubing inside there's a pretty substantial ridge there. And Jason over at Fireball Tool has a way to remove that. And the way he does it is he makes a custom made brooch to fit inside that tubing and then pulls it through with a piece of all thread on a drill. At least that's the way I remember it. But I have a more modern piece of tubing here and it has a much less pronounced ridge inside. I'm just going to sand it down with my uh, long belt sander. The fact of the matter is the fit is not all that bad even with the ridge. So let's go over to the hardware store, see if we can find a screw and a crank that we can use on this project. So one thing I do is I come out to the steel scrapyard and try to get materials for my projects. Look at this thing. I don't know what this is, but I think there might be something on it we can use on the English wheel project. I think this screw, I think this one's the one I'm going to take. Look at that pneumatic actuator. That thing's about, uh, got about a 12 inch throw on it. See these nice linear bearings here too? Man, if the guy were making a CNC, that'd be a good find. There it is. One elevator for an English wheel. That is a stepper motor, and it's huge. It's about the size of a two horsepower motor. There's rotary encoder. This is a PID. And that looks like a PLC, man, that. Yes, he'd probably only want 20 bucks for that thing. So yeah, wherever you are, there's probably a scrapyard very similar to this, and it's a gold mine. I buy stuff here all the time. And if you follow me on Instagram at wildman.tech, you'll see the treasures I pull out of this place and the ones I leave behind. Okay, we got our screw. The first thing I want to do is construct this telescope mechanism. Now we'll grind out that ridge.
but the sander won't reach all the way, so we're going to use some 46 grit sandpaper. This here's a trick I learned from Lou Sozed on Tips from a Shipwright channel. You quarter the sandpaper and then split it, and that way when you fold it, you don't have two abrasive faces facing each other. I was beginning to wonder if that if making that brooch might not have been an easier job, but then a little bit of WD just uh, smoothed it right out. So the next thing we need to do is make a cap to go in the end of this to accept this, which is basically a plain bearing. And then we also need to shrink this down and find a way to bolt it into this piece here. I think some 3 8 plates should do nicely for the plain bearing. We'll just scribe a line and cut that out. I know I'm going to want this beveled on the sides to get a nice fillet weld in there. It'll be easiest to do these two sides before I cut the piece. Now that hole is neither in the middle this way or in the middle that way. So what we'll do here is we'll center the hole inside the tube and then cut it to fit. And that looks like it. In doing my research for this project, I've discovered that most English wheels have a larger wheel on top and a smaller wheel on the bottom. Now, that's something that I knew all along because I've seen a bunch of them. But uh, something that I didn't realize is a lot of them have several different size wheels for the bottom. So I've ordered a six inch wheel that's going to be the hammer wheel. And then I'll use a couple of different wheels that I have on hand as the anvil wheel. So checking the alignment here, this is in the middle on this end, but it's not in the middle on this end. So I'm gonna need to make some adjustments so it doesn't try to flex that screw. And looking at that, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's ever so slightly a parallelogram. And the more I think about this, the more I think I want a bronze bushing in there. Let me go hunt down one of those. Okay, well I wasn't able to get a thrust bearing, but I did get a flange bushing, and I think I'm going to put that in there, but I'm going to have to drill this out first. And since this is also going to be welded on to the end of here, I'm also going to have to figure a way to install the flange bushing down at the end. I think all I'm going to have to do is slip it onto the threaded rod and, and push it in. Then the way I'm going to lock this in place inside there is just with these flathead screws. Here's what we've got going. I've got the threaded insert clamped in there. It's just flexing the tubing to lock it in place because it, it was a pretty firm fit before anyway. I've got a center punched hole here and I've got a wedge back here to locate the threaded rod in the right place. What we're going to do is we're going to run the tap drill hole all the way through the, the tube, the aluminum threaded insert, out the other end of the tube. Then we'll come back and enlarge the hole and countersink in the tube and then we'll tap the aluminum insert. So I got a little bit close to the edge there and the, ed and the head was poking out a little bit uh, but I just come in with a grinder and, and ground it off. Uh, it fits in there fine now. Next thing, we're going to have to weld our, our wheel mount onto it. And this is just a caster. I'll just cut these tabs off and we'll weld that all the way around. And that will be the end of this piece. Then I need to weld this cap onto there. And that will be the end of that piece. Then we'll weld up our framework. Before we get too far, let's make sure this is still square, and that is... Oops. 
Okay, now to press this bronze bushing in, I think we'll just use these two clamps. And it's coming through nicely. Okay, that's in. And we got too much too much bronze poking out there. So what I'm gonna do is chop it off, sand it off, then ream it. Now that little piece of bushing, that I can still use that for something else. Doesn't really take much. Just get that little burr off there. Okay, that is a nice, smooth action. Okay, this is coming together pretty nicely. All right, well, there we are. We got our anvil with its elevator. All we need now is the hammer. Okay, this caster is gonna be the hammer wheel, so I've already cut it off its little swivel gadget. Now what we need to do is make some gussets to attach it to the boom. I'm gonna make those out of this 3 16 plate. Okay, so here's what I came up with. I made these semi-diamond shapes because I, I think I'm going to reinforce this up here on top and bottom uh, by boxing it in as well. There's my hammer and anvil looking just the way it should. So we'll tack this together, weld it up, and then I'll show you how it works. Now the microphone battery had died at this point, but what I'm doing here is I'm showing you how to use the English wheel. Uh, the blue thing on the table is a sandbag that I made from canvas. You can buy one for about $50, or you can make your own from about uh, $5 in materials, which is what I did here. Uh, the mallet is called a teardrop mallet. It's just uh, a really hard plastic. It uh, doesn't have a lot of weight to it. But uh, if you bang it onto pretty thin steel, like what I'm using here, uh, it'll, it'll make a bunch of dimples in there. Now at this point, I've done this about three times where I banged on the metal and run it through the English wheel, and you can see a definite dome shape is appearing. And this is the kind of effect that the English wheel can produce. And the better you get at it, you can, you can contour these uh, curved effects in whatever way you desire. I don't know how to do that myself, but uh, hopefully I'll learn. So there we have a dome. This dome is just one of the many things that the English wheel can do. The biggest task before me at this point is to learn how to do them. If I reach a point where I'm able to convey some of that knowledge to you through a video, I'll make one on that. All that remains from this point is to take it back apart, paint it, put it back together, start using it. And if you want to see the result of that endeavor, find me on Instagram. My name there is wildman.tech. So that's all for this time. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And by all means, stay safe during this pandemic. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.